can't be talked in to being spiritual. I know that. They can't be browbeat into being spiritual. I know that. They can't be dragged into being spiritual. I know that. But tonight, I just want to, by God's Word, show you some things that you can have. And, and I thank God for what He's doing in our midst. I do. I want you to know that I see something at the altar I have never seen. I, I mean, to the extent I've never seen it. Uh, right lately, I've noticed people coming to the altar truly weeping. Where there's no sorrow of sin, there's no remission of sin. There's no forgiveness of sin. We have to see what we are as a people. We have to recognize that it's about our sin, our, the power of God to change us. But if we don't see the need of change, uh, you understand there is no change going to take place. You have to see your need. You can't be fixed till you recognize you're sick. But when you recognize it, and then to ask God to do it, and you don't accept what He's done, that's an insult to Christ. Christ wants to set you free. Christ wants to give you victory. Christ wants to, for you to be led by His Spirit. I want to tell you something, church. The Lord doesn't want you to be miserable and downtrodden and discouraged. And, and He don't want you to do that. His whole program is not that. And when a person goes through their Christian life, always there's always something wrong. There, there is something wrong. You don't know who God is. You don't know the Deliverer. And I want tonight to take some time here to get you to understand you can have joy or you can go through your life grumpy. You can go through your life always having it in for somebody, always being uh, disturbed with somebody. You can go through your life, you come to the altar this morning, and by the night you've lost everything you got at this morning. You can do that. That's very easy. That's the old leaky tire uh, uh, program that I've talked about. We got the tire up, it looks fine. But the truth is, it's got a leak in it. And the next time you look at it, it's half flat or all the way flat. And you pump it up and you say, boy, it doesn't look good. But it's not fixed. It's got a leak in it. And unless we plug up the leak and stop the hole, we're not ever going to, because just at the time God needs you, you're flat. He just at the time he's got something for you, you're flat. All the time people are saying, I want to be used of God. I'm always wanting to be used of God. But friend, unless you are running sound, unless you are running according to the Spirit of God, when he needs you, you will not be, you'll be... I know people that spend half of their time out of victory because there's something wrong. They want something, and it is always about themselves. Until we get past that, till we come to the place that we say it's not about me, it's about the kingdom of God. It's not about me, but it is about Him. That's what this whole thing is about. It's not how you feel. It's not anything about that. He doesn't have any interest in how you feel. Well, he does, but not as far as your walk with him. He lets you get to the place that you, you, there is some discouragement sometimes. 
And, and, and you feel that you're all alone, that God is not with you at all. You're just hanging out there. It's not true. But he just thought he'd let you just walk by yourself a few steps. Friend, I want to tell you something. God wants to bless you tonight. He wants you to be fired up. He wants you to walk in His, in His promises. I want you to turn with me to the 34th chapter of Psalms. Now, before we start, I want to, I want to cite something to you. The things that's put in the Bible are put in the Bible for you. The things that's put in the Bible several thousand years ago are totally up to date today. There's not any point in us going through this if you're not going to say, I'm going to take this to myself and I'm going to, I'm going to say, yes, it's about God. The thing of it is, we run cold all the time or we run fearful. The Lord says for us to fear Him and fear nothing else. We're not to fear. The Bible says constantly fear not. We're not to fear. Except we have a fear which means a respect. Our fear for God is a respect. It's a respect for Him. Now let me tell you what the fear a, a, a little bit more is. The fear of God it is because of his righteousness and his holiness, our fear is that he must judge sin. You see, God has to judge sin. He cannot allow sin. He has every intention of delivering the world from sin. Total sin. He's going to purge the world of sin. Of all sin, He's going to purge the world of ever evil thought. He's going to purge the world from ever lie. He's going to purge the world from ever bad attitude. There will be no grumpy people in heaven. There's not going to be any discouraged people in heaven. There's not going to be any downtrodden people in heaven. God is going to purge the world of all of that. Let me tell you something. This may surprise you and cause you maybe not to even want to go to heaven. There will be no temper tantrums in heaven. None. Hmm. Not going to have any there. Not going to have any pity parties in heaven. None. Not any. It's just going to be a wonderful place. It's going to be a great place, a place of joy. But I want you to go with me to the seventh verse of the 34th chapter of Psalms. And I want you to realize something. God did not save you just to throw you out here in the masses and say, you know, now you're on your own. I saved you. I did, I did my part. I died for you, and you would think that would be enough. I, I gave you my, my blood, and, and, and I died on the cross. Now you're on your own. No. Friend, you're not on your own. The fourth verse, or the seventh verse of the 34th chapter, the angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him and delivers them. Now, I want you to notice something tonight in this message, and I hope it doesn't take me all night to preach this because I don't want to take a lot of time here to preach a sermon. But I want to show you something. I want you to realize something. God is on your side if you're living a holy life. And He will put all of His powers at your disposal to deliver you. He will give you everything that you ever wanted or needed, I should say, that it, that to do the job with. He didn't call you to salvation to say, now I'm not going to give you the job 
or, or the tools to serve me. I'm not going to do that. It says here that I will, or that he will, the angel of the Lord, uh, the angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him. Now what does it mean to fear him? It means to obey him. The reason so many Christians never seem to get the victory is that they have no understanding about the fear of God. I All I hear in the majority of people today is talking about God's grace. Listen, His grace is sufficient for you. There is no question. His grace is sufficient. But the fear of the Lord comes when we say that, you know, I know this, God by His very nature and by who He is, He has to judge sin. He's got to do it. He has no choice because that's who God is. He is going to judge sin. But I want to tell you something. He doesn't cut you off when just because you do something that isn't right. He doesn't even cut you off when you sin. He gives you the opportunity to repent of that sin. But I want to tell you something. When we have no fear of God, it seems as though that we have no reason to, or, or seem to have any understanding that there is any race about sin. Friend, I want you to know this. When you do something wrong and when you sin, you need to get it right with God. Every day, there is people that constantly talk about, I do not know Jesus. It happens all the time. Friends, you can know Him. You can have a relationship with Him. You can walk with Him. It's not about religion. It's not about, it's not about being religious. It's not about a church. Uh, as we think of a church. It's about the body of Christ. And I want you to know that the angel of the Lord, when you've got a problem, the angel of the Lord encamps. That means he comes to you. That means that he encircles you. That means, and let's, let's notice, if you don't, I don't want you to turn there because we don't have the time. But you can put this down, those of you that's making notes. Second King. 616. You know what that is. That's Elisha and the, and the Syrian army. When Elisha, uh, you know, said that, that he was going to uh, uh, do certain things and lead the, the children of Israel and, or free the children of Israel, and the Assyrians uh, uh, went, went down. The Syrians said that we've got to find out where this guy Elisha is because he's telling all of her secrets. Elisha, you know, was telling the king uh, uh, of, of, the, of the Jews uh, and the king of the children of Israel where all of the enemy's camps was going to be set up. And so the king of Syria said, we're going to go down and we're going to take uh, Elisha. We've got to find this guy. We've got to do away with him because he's given away all of her secrets. How, have you ever noticed how some people always seems to have a calm about them all the time? They never get all upset about any, it seems like anything. There is always a calm. You know why? Because they had the eyes or have the eyes of Elisha. And Elisha, they, they went down into the city and the next morning when, the, when the, uh, his servant got up, Elisha's servant, and he went out and there was all the way around, all the way around on the mountains that surrounded the city was the Syrian army. And he said, oh my Lord, how do we do? What do we do? How are we going to overcome this? We are surrounded. We have no way of escape. And Elisha said, don't be concerned. He, so he answered, I do not fear. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. 
and he prayed and he asked God to open the eyes of this young man, his servant. And he looked up above the Syrian army on the next tier of the mountain. And he saw chariots of fire all the way around above the Syrian army. And there was two or three to one of the chariots of fire and the host of heaven. Friend, I want to tell you something. There is nobody that can pull you down. There isn't anybody that can take, uh, that can take your peace there isn't anybody that can take your joy. There isn't anybody that can take your salvation unless you keep your eyes on the Syrian army. Raise your eyes a little bit and see the chariots of fire and the angels of the Lord encamp round about you. They will set you free. But as long as you keep looking, at the things the devil wants you to look at instead of the things God wants you to look at you have no hope friend I want to tell you something the reason we have no victory we're not giving our life to Christ Elisha said Lord open his eyes that he can see. Open his eyes and he saw all the way around him. There's some people, there's no doubt some in this room tonight that thinks you're getting by fine. They, you think everything is fine. Friend, it isn't. It's not, it has nothing to do with me. I, I, it always bothers me when I see people that can't look me in the eye. I always wonder why. They can't, do you ever see someone like that? They can't look at you. They don't have a direct look at you. There is something, you always know there's something wrong. You always wonder what they're up to. What is it, why is it that a person can't look you in the eye? They can't, they, they, they you can see them coming. And, and you can see, or they see something, they're, they're coming right at you. They're coming right, right towards you. But they see something over here. And they always see something over here. That's strange to me. Here I am. Take a look. You always know there's something wrong. When people can't look, they always, they never see if there's any way they cannot make eye contact and, and speak and, and say, how are you? Whatever, anything. Adios, anything. They, they never can, is that not strange? Do you ever notice that? Do you see that? You always know there's something wrong. He said, open his eyes, and he did. Now, I want to go on. God will take care of you if you let him. God will take care of you if you look him in the eye. You got to look him in the eye. You got to see him. How many times have you been to this altar praying about exactly the same thing. I, I've got this problem. You had this problem last month. You had this problem three months ago. You had this problem a year ago. Why don't you get rid of the problem? When you get to the place that you fear God, you get rid of the problem. Don't go on saying, well, the reason I'm having this struggling is because of this. The struggle because of this. No, you're having this struggle because you like this. You want to cover up to it. And it's like a little teddy bear. It's your security blanket. Now, I'm talking to a whole bunch of people tonight. I've got this security blanket. It has burrs all over it but I'm trying to sleep on it. Now, it's a miserable sucker, 
but it is my security blanket. <laughs> God's not going to encamp around you. He's going to say you're on your own. Now when you cry out to me and you give up that junk and that security blanket, I'm going to come rushing to you and I'm going to listen to you. Now, let me tell you something. You have an anger problem because you love it. That's your security blanket. It gives you, it gives you, uh, it, 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 it gives you uh, something that people will look at. And I'd rather be wrong than not be noticed. I, I, I do the things that I do because I want to do them. I've got these problems in my life because I like them. I want them. I, I don't fear God. I want these things in my life. I have no fear of God. I figure I'm going to get by. No, friend, the day is going to come when your sin will be judged. But it will sap you of all of your energy. I, I, I want you to know this. Your sin makes you tired. Your sin keeps you from getting up in the morning and praying. Your sin saps you of everything. It causes you to always be down and tired. There, the tiredness of the body is unbelievable. It's because of your sin. I'm dragging this thing with me and it's a load. And then when we get in real trouble and we say, do you understand? Because we haven't feared God, you're always going to fear something. You're either going to fear God or you're going to fear the circumstance. You're going to fear what's coming at you. But now if you fear God, you don't need to fear the circumstance. The, the ninth verse. There is, listen to this. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. Now it says it again. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. Fear the Lord. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. Why do you fear the Lord? Because he's going to judge sin. That is what it, that's why you fear the Lord. You don't fear the Lord because he's going to do something bad to you. You fear the Lord because he's going to do something good to you. He's going to judge sin. And if you don't have any sin in your life, he's not going to judge you. He's going to judge the people that have sin. He's going to do away with sin. He is determined and he is set on and his mind is made up. There will be no sin in the end. Fear the Lord, O oh, you saints, you his saints. There is no want to those that fear him. You don't have to have want. I want to tell you something. Now, it says no want. I want you to know what it says. That means your heart will get so right, you won't ask or want anything that's not right. Your heart will become so pure that you're not going to ask God for anything that isn't right. You're not going to be saying, I want this and I want that and I want this toy and that toy. I want all these things. God will bless you if you do what's right. He will, he will absolutely bless you. There is no want to those who fear God. Let, let me say this. Ladies, do you, have you got any wants? Let me tell you, God will meet. He says there is no wants to those that fear the Lord. That Psalms 84, 11. For the Lord God is the Son. Now write this down. Psalms 84, 11. For the Lord God is the Son. He gives you warmth. And He is also the shield. He, he protects you. The Lord will give grace and glory. 
No good thing, listen to this, church. No good thing will be withheld from those who walk uprightly. Nothing. You got it all if you walk uprightly. If you say, I'm going to serve God, it says that no good thing will be withheld from those who walk upright. You have a right to believe God for everything. You have a right to be protected. You have a right because of God, not because of any rights of yours, but the, God, the rights that God gave you. The, the angel of the Lord will encamp around you. There, uh, do not... Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than with, with them. Oh, fear the Lord, you His saints. There is no want to those who fear Him. I want you to hear this. For the Lord God is my Son. When things get cold and nasty and bad, He is my Son. He is also, when it gets too bad, He is my shield. No good thing will be withheld from me. I have a right by what God has given me to walk in victory and be. That's what the Bible says. That's for you. It's for you. You, you. There's no need. Don't look at the circumstance. You say, well, I've learned my lesson. Now I think I can get on with my life. Friend, this is your life. Get on with it. At Heartland, this is your life. This is it. As bad as you hate it, this is it. We have young people come in here and they are just... They think that it's the end of the world. No, it's the beginning. Their life, I hear them say, my life is over. Yes, that old junky life is over. Now you're going to get a new one. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Mm. Luke. Luke 11, I'm just going to read a very short portion of this. Luke 11, 9. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Do you hear me? Ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open. I'll give you anything, he says. But you've got to fear God. I'll give you anything. I'll give you joy. I want you to, I want all of you to look in the mirror. You'll find that some of you do this. I, I, I just want to, I, I want to just, if, I don't want to embarrass you, but I love to see what God does. We have a late, you, 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 uh, you just, you're all right. You don't have to get up. I won't make you get up. This lady right, well, yeah, I do. I want you to. I've changed my mind. Because they got to see this. you got to see this. Yeah, you, you, you have to see this. Mm. A beautiful lady. Because she's got Jesus. How many of you remember her when she come? She had her head down. She was on antidepressant pills. I don't know how many drugs. She was on, she was on everything. She was about ready to give it up suicidal, got wonderful children. She's got everything. And only because she's got Jesus. Now she holds her head up. Yeah. 
I believe she'll get her children. I believe she's going to have things that she's never dreamed ever. And the only difference is Jesus. It's not about anything else. And it's a pleasure now when I walk in the convenience store and she's there, I am blessed. It's a blessing. Thank you. God bless you. Mm. You know what happened? She asked, and it was given. She sought God, and she found. She knocked, and it was opened. People fret and stew about everything. She didn't say, well, you know, it's about my kids, so I, I can't stay here. She stayed here. She had kids, but she had them when she come. Now she's going to have a life because it don't make any difference about anything. She's got a life because of Jesus. And once she loses Jesus, I don't care what she has, she has no life. If we can just get people to understand that, it's all about the Lord. It's about God. It's about Him.